Greetings and welcome to the Kanguka Broadcast. My name is Chris Nikomana. Today is Thursday. This morning, I want to continue the topic we were discussing last Thursday. We we're talking about secular music and I hope that this teaching is helpful to you because I know that there are many Christians who are not happy when someone tells them to not listen to secular music. Some people say that we are being too radical, we are exaggerating. But I want you to understand what I'm trying to say to you. I know that some people understand. Not everyone is on board, but some people understand that I'm trying to tell you that songs have a powerful impact on your soul. It took me many years before I could come to that understanding. A singer may sing about love, he may not say anything bad, but you don't know the impact of that song on your soul. That's why we need to be careful about the words we let into our souls. Many people People don't realize the power of songs. They think that they just go through their ears and mind and that's it. But there is power in songs and they can have a deep impact into your soul. Last week, we saw in Daniel chapter 3 that before the people could bow to Nebuchadnezzar's idol, the musicians first had to play music and sing. Verse 5 says that as soon as the music started to play, the people had to bow before the idol. That's what the law said. They couldn't bow to the idol without music. It means that music or songs have a spiritual impact on people they affect your spirit. That's why every child of God should make sure that he is listening to music that brings honor to God because the words that bring honor to God have a powerful impact in your spirit. Many of you are familiar with Psalms chapter 22 verse 3. It's a verse that I often mention in this broadcast. It says that God is enthroned in the praises of his children. It means that when you sing praises to God, his power is manifested. Whenever I face hardships and I'm not not feeling well, I often play music that honors God. Even if I'm not singing, I can sense a change in the spiritual atmosphere because if a song honors God, it attracts His glory. So, I want to conclude this teaching by looking up Psalms 150. Many people are familiar with this psalm. It's a very short psalm with only six verses. It says, Praise the Lord, praise God. It contains words of praise and it shows the power of praise. Verse 2 says, Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. And verse 3 says, Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with all the instruments you have. Today, this includes the keyboard and the piano and the guitar and the flute. It's any instrument that's available today. Verse 4 says, Praise Him with the tambourine and dance. You can see that there is nothing wrong with dancing for God. Today, some people claim that dancing for God is an act of the flesh. They criticize those who dance for God and they say that they are in flesh. It's true that there are some people who are really in the flesh when they dance for God and they just want to enjoy themselves. But if you are dancing for God, then there is nothing wrong with it. Some people just dance for fun because they see others dancing and they join them just so they can enjoy themselves. Those people are dancing in the flesh. But if you are going to dance, you should dance for God. David dances for God with so much passion that his clothes fell off and God was pleased. So even today, you can dance for God. It's true that there are people who dance in the flesh. But if you see someone dancing for God, you shouldn't judge him so you won't be at risk of provoking God's anger. Remember that God wasn't pleased with the wife of David because she despised him for dancing so much that his clothes fell off. She thought that his attitude was wasn't fit for a king. Even today, some people are very judgmental when they see someone joyful dancing for God and they claim that it's the work of the flesh. No, this is not the work of the flesh because verse 4 is telling us to praise God with the tambourine and with dances. Verse 5 lists many instruments that you can use to praise God and verse 6 says, Let everyone that has breathed praise the Lord. Let all the instruments and all the songs give Give glory to God. If you saved, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you should only let into your soul songs that praise I am because they will have a great impact on you. Don't accept songs that will trigger bad thoughts in you or other desires, but listen to songs that will inspire you to praise I am.
behind the teaching portion of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of Samuel. Yesterday, I told you that David and his men returned to their homes in Ziklag and once they got there, they realized that their wives and their children had been taken captive by the Amalekites. They took their families and all their belongings and they burned down the city but they didn't kill anyone. Can you imagine returning to your city and you find out that all the houses have been burned and all your possessions and your family have been taken? David and his men didn't even know that their families were still alive. They thought that they had been killed. Let me remind you that in Exodus chapter 17, Joshua fought against the Amalekites while Moses was on the mountain. Every time Moses raised his hands, the men of Israel prevailed. But when Moses lowered his hands, the Amalekites prevailed. I explained to you that Amalek is a picture of the flesh or the carnal nature. That's why the Amalekites keep coming back. They keep coming back and we need to kill them. We need to kill the carnal nature. That's why the word of God says that those who are saved have been crucified with Christ. They have crucified their carnal nature. Remember that the first reason why God rejected Saul as king was because he failed to obey when God told him to kill the Amalekites. He didn't kill them all and he even spared their king. If Saul had obeyed God and killed all the Amalekites, David and his men would have never had the problem they were facing on that day. The Amalekites were, who attacked Ziklag are the ones who were spared by Saul. If Saul had killed them all, we wouldn't see any more issues caused by the Amalekites in the Bible. But I'm speaking in spiritual terms. Let me remind you that we are in the new covenant and you don't kill people just because they are bad. When we talk about killing the Amalekites, we are not talking about killing people, but we are talking about killing your carnal nature. That's what I want you to understand. Let's go back to our main story. So when David came back, the city was destroyed and all their families and possessions had been taken away and David and his men were crying. Verse 3 says, David and his men came to the city and there it was burnt with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had had been taken captive. And verse 4 says that David and his men lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. Today I want to focus on verse 4. Sometimes you cry and sometimes you can get to a point where you don't even have the strength to cry. You don't stop crying because you have an answer to your problem or because you are happy. But you stop crying because you no longer have the strength to cry. If you are complaining today because there is something wrong in your life, it means Means that you still have the strength to complain. Some people are so overwhelmed by their problems that they've reached a point where they can't even complain. David and his men cried because they thought that they may never see their wives and children again. And they cried so much that they reached a point where they no longer had the strength to cry. You can see in verse 5 that the wives of David were among the captives, which means that David was also crying with his men. Please read verse 6 carefully. I really want to focus on on this verse. It says that David was greatly distressed because the people were talking about stoning him. Can you see how hard it is to be a leader? The people went with David, they were together, but now there is an issue and they all turn against David and they want to stone him because their hearts are fully of bitterness. But they forget that David had also lost his wife and his children. He had lost his family. He had lost his parents. Remember that he had fled with his parents and his entire family and he was feeling the exact same pain that his men were feeling. But it's in the nature of men to always try to find a victim when there is a problem. When God asked Adam why he ate the forbidden fruit, he blamed Eve. And when God asked the same question to Eve, she blamed the serpent. We are always trying to blame others because we don't like to admit our own mistakes. So these men were ready to stone David because they were blaming him for their losses. They were saying that it's his fault because he's the one who brought them there. But you need to remember that David never forced anyone to follow him. They all made their own decision to follow him. But the last part of verse 6 is very important. That's the reason why I love this chapter. It says that David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. This is very important and God willing, I will explain this verse tomorrow so we can understand what the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great day.
If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.